Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Caitlin and I upload all forms of content on this channel that mainly revolve around true crime, education and psychology. So if that sounds like something you'd enjoy and you haven't already checked out my other content, then definitely do. If you don't already know, I do also have a second channel where I upload content revolving around beauty, fashion and lifestyle. So if you want to see some more videos from me, then definitely head on over there. Today I'm back with another true crime case and today we're going to be discussing the case and kind of the trial more specifically of Edith Thompson and Frederick Bywaters. Now in more recent years this case has kind of become very very well known as a lot of people have argued that this was a huge instant in which it was just a complete miscarriage of justice essentially. So as always I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts down below but please do be respectful of other people's opinions. And very quickly before we jump into the case I'm just going to zoom through my regular disclaimer that I like to include at the start of all my videos. Just letting you guys know that I'm not claiming to be an expert in this case or any of the other cases that I cover over on my channel. I am simply relaying information I'm able to find through research on the internet and because only some sources are accessible to me it means I may get things wrong, leave things out or mispronounce things and I do apologise if I do any of those things. I'm not trying to cause anyone any harm or an injustice, I'm just simply working with the information I do have available to me. So with all that being said we should just go ahead and get started discussing the case of Edith Thompson and Frederick Bywaters. Edith Jessie Thompson was born Edith Graydon on the 25th of December in the year of 1893 in Dalston in London. Edith was the oldest of five children in her family and they all lived together in the family home at 97 Norfolk Road in London. Her father's name was William Eustace Graydon who supported his family by working as a clerk for the Imperial Tobacco Company and her mother Ethel Jessie Lyles was known to locals as being the daughter of a police constable. Edith was known to be a happy and bubbly child. She enjoyed participating in dancing and acting as well as performing well academically throughout her childhood and in particular she was known to be rather gifted in mathematics. After finishing school she very quickly became a bookkeeper for a local fabric importing company and she got to use this gift of hers for mathematics to earn herself a living. Her colleagues and acquaintances had a very good impression of Edith as she was viewed as others as being very intelligent and she was a beautiful young woman, she was always dressed really well, she was very stylish and put together so all round everyone that knew her just had this very good impression of her. And then in the year of 1909 when Edith was 16 years old she met a man named Percy Thompson. The pair fell in love and soon became engaged and then after six years of being fiancés, they married in 1916. The pair decided to begin their search for a home together and they actually settled on buying a house in a place called Ilford in Essex, which was at the time a rather lavish and up and coming area. Both of them had their individual thriving careers and to all those who knew them, their lives were perfect. And this is when a man named Frederick Bywaters enters the picture. Edith had been familiar with Frederick almost 10 years before as he had been a friend of Edith's younger brother during their school years together. But in 1920, Edith and her husband Percy both became very good friends with Frederick. At this point, Frederick was a member of the Merchant Navy and he spent his time transporting goods and containers on large ships. And Edith found herself instantly attracted to Frederick. He was a man who'd travelled the world and who was impulsive, spontaneous, and he was notably good looking. She had allegedly been happy with her husband Percy, but upon becoming acquainted with Frederick, apparently made her husband seem almost too stable and conventional as opposed to this good-looking, charming, spontaneous Frederick. Percy hadn't appeared to have picked up on this attraction to their new friend and he welcomed him in as a close friend to the couple. The three of them had then even booked a trip together to the Isle of Wight in the company of Edith's sister. Following their holiday, Percy had extended a formal invite to Frederick for him to move in with them permanently, to which he agreed. And it was at this point that Edith and Frederick had begun their romantic affair, but it didn't take long for Percy to catch on. Upon realising what had been happening behind his back, Percy had confronted the pair and a huge argument had broken out. And during this argument, Frederick had instructed Percy that he must divorce Edith. In response, Percy had demanded that Frederick leave their house. Following him doing so, Edith and Percy then continued in their heated argument. Edith had later told an acquaintance of what had happened during this quarrel and according to her, the argument had gotten extremely heated before Percy had beat her several times and thrown her across the room. In September of 1921, Frederick had set off for work and he'd be gone for around a year before ever seeing Edith in person again and in his absence the pair kept in contact through letters. On the 3rd of October 1922, the month after Frederick had returned from sea, Edith and her husband Percy had booked tickets to see a show in the Criterion Theatre in Piccadilly Circus. Following the performance the pair had begun their walk home together but Percy would never make it. During their journey someone had jumped out of some bushes not far from the couple's home and launched himself at Percy. There had been a violent fight with Percy attempting to 
fend off the unknown attacker, and Edith found herself suddenly being knocked to the ground during the struggle. Percy had then been stabbed by the attacker, and he sadly died before Edith could ever alert for anyone to get help. The unknown attacker had run from the scene, and the neighbours had soon caught on after hearing the commotion that Edith had been making. Some of them had later told the police that they'd heard her screaming, no, don't, as the fight ensued. When police had arrived to the scene of Percy's murder, they found Edith in a hysterical state. They had escorted her to the local police department to give a report on what had happened. She'd only slightly calmed down at that point, but she was still very visibly distressed. She'd immediately told authorities that she was confident she knew who had killed her husband. It had been Frederick Bywaters, the man that she'd had an affair with. Police instantly began their investigation into Frederick, and during which they discovered the love letters that had been shared between Edith and Frederick over the year prior. And not only was Frederick arrested for Percy Thompson's murder, but Edith was too. The letters had been the only thing that suggested that Edith had not just been a witness to the murder. The letters had been the only thing suggesting that Edith had not just been a witness to the murder of Percy Thompson, but rather an accomplice. Although saying that, they didn't exactly prove that she had any direct involvement or knowledge in the crime itself. The approach investigators had taken to the arrest had been that if two individuals had wished for the death of another person, and then one of these two people acts on that, since they are acting on shared intentions, they are each just as guilty as the other. And as a result of this, the pair were charged with the murder of Percy Thompson. The trial of the pair started on the 6th of December in the year of 1922 at the Old Bailey in London. Frederick had cooperated entirely with police, even taking them to the murder weapon that he'd hidden after attacking Percy, but he continually argued that he'd carried out the attack without any form of knowledge on behalf of Edith. During the trial, the love letters between the pair were read aloud, in which Edith has stated a number of times how she wished to be with her true love, Frederick, and how she wanted to be rid of Percy. In one letter, she'd written how she'd once smashed a light bulb and mixed in the glass pieces into Percy's dinner, as well as feeding him poison on a number of different occasions, but neither of these acts had caused him to die. And it seemed as though when her attempts had failed, she'd pleaded with Frederick to do something so she could be free of her husband. And going against the advice of her legal team, Edith ended up testifying at the trial, but she was very quickly caught in a web of lies. Some had even stated that she'd appeared to have been enjoying the publicity that she was receiving from the trial, and even when testifying that she'd given the impression of being very flirtatious and overly dramatic. She had allegedly contradicted herself a number of times and appeared to not make the best impression on the members of the jury or the judge or anyone that was involved in the trial. Realistically, the testimonies provided by the neighbours who had heard her screams of distress during the attack on her husband should have planted significant doubt in the minds of the jury as to her being involved in the attack. But the way that she'd seemed to carry herself and act almost carelessly throughout the trial and while testifying had ruined this potential impression. Edith could not have known of his plans of the attack that night for one important reason, simply that he had not intended to kill Percy. He had allegedly set out just to confront the man and declare his love for Edith, prompting him to then file for divorce, but when Percy had then fought back, Frederick had simply lost his temper. One quote that I could find that was given by Frederick during the trial was as follows. The reason I fought with Thompson was because he never acted like a man to his wife. He always seemed several degrees lower than a snake. I loved her and I could not go on seeing her leading that life. I did not intend to kill him, I only meant to injure him. I gave him the opportunity of standing up to me like a man, but he wouldn't. And in regards to the statements that were read out from the love letters, Frederick had testified that at no point in reading those letters had he actually believed that Edith had attempted to murder her husband, but rather that she had a very impressive imagination and, and was writing with a flair for the dramatic. He said that she often romanticised or acted in a melodramatic way, and she spent her time reading these glamorised fiction novels and acting as though she was a character in one. And some sources I came across also stated that Edith had informed Frederick by letter that she had one point fallen pregnant with her husband's child, but she'd aborted it herself. Once again, I'm not entirely sure if this was a fact and if it had occurred or whether it was simply an exaggeration that Frederick seemed to think Edith was kind of prone to, but it definitely helped shape the public opinion on Edith. But regarding the letters, I will leave a link to a fantastic website below that has the entire collection of love letters shared between the couple if you do want to kind of sift through them yourself and form your own opinion based on what was written in those. The trial ended on December the 11th of that year when the jury had deliberated and settled on a guilty verdict for both Edith and Frederick. As a result, the pair was sentenced to death by hanging. Following the news, Edith loudly broke down and began to scream while Frederick's reaction had been simply to begin shouting of Edith's innocence. Following the trial, there was a public outcry prompted by a huge amount of media coverage. Newspapers were printing stories that seemed to dramatise the trial and the crime further, painting the pair in an extremely biased and evil light. But the public opinion was suddenly shifted when the news
news spread of the death sentence the pair were given. People seemed to suddenly become sympathetic of the pair's situation and a petition even surfaced to challenge the death sentence. Frederick had appeared to gain public support specifically because of his unwavering defence of Edith, how at no point following his arrest did he stop declaring her innocence in the murder. Edith had more mixed opinions from the public as many did see her as a careless woman but it appeared to be shared almost with sympathy, mostly as many saw the death sentencing as way too harsh for the extent of her involvement in the crime. As well as this, just the news alone of Edith being sentenced to death by hanging had been a controversial one as there had not been a woman subjected to this for some years in Britain since 1907. But despite the public support for the pair and the widely shared sympathy, petition and outcry did not affect the opinion of the Home Secretary at the time and he announced that their death penalty would not be altered. The pair then soon received word of their set execution date and Edith was said to have broken down completely following the news. She no longer focused on her confidence and her innocence and she spent her last few days hysterically crying and screaming and refusing to eat. On the morning of her execution she had to be sedated in order for her to be calmed down and then the executions went ahead on January the 9th in 1923. Edith was executed in Holloway prison while Frederick was executed in Pentonville prison and their hangings occurred both simultaneously at 9am on that day, just miles apart from one another. Their remains had both been buried on the grounds of the prisons where they had lost their lives. And this case has been of much public interest over the years as the remains contradicting opinions of the outcome of the trial. While many people believe that the fate of the pair, in particular Edith, had been wrong, the concept of common purpose still remains. So this is referring to, as I said previously, the fact of law relating to two individuals discussing wishing a third person dead and then one of them acting on this shared intention means that they are both equally guilty of the murder. There have been a number of books dedicated to the murder of Percy Thompson and the subsequent trial of Edith Thompson and Frederick Bywaters and from what I can tell it's generally considered a gross miscarriage of justice that the pair had been given the death sentence. Following the sentencing of Edith, her mother had actually written directly to the king begging for him to see mercy when it comes to his daughter's case but this made no change. She was also unable to visit her daughter's grave since she had been buried inside Holloway Prison's grounds. It's believed that Ethel Graydon's dying wish had been for Edith to be reburied in her family's grave in the City of London Cemetery and in 2018 the Ministry of Justice granted an exhumation of Edith's remains and a reburial where she was moved into the grave shared by her mother and father 95 years later. I think this case can be quite a controversial one as people seem to have very strong opinions on the outcome but I'd love for you guys to let me know your thoughts down below. Um, also like I said at the start please be respectful of other people's opinions. Just as to whether you think the death sentencing was way too harsh I think a lot of the time in a lot of the sources that I read people weren't questioning the guilt of the pair that they should have had some form of conviction for the involvement in Percy Thompson's crime but it just seems like quite a common belief that the death sentencing had been too harsh so I'd love to know your guys' opinions on that. But that is where I'm going to end today's video. I hope you guys found this interesting. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, I hope you found this interesting and I'll see you very soon for another video. Thanks for watching. Bye.